Okay, it's 3.30 Central Time. Um, we'll get started. <clears throat> My name is uh, Charlotte Kukundakwe. I work as an outreach coordinator at the University of Kansas at the Kansas African Studies Center. So, um, yeah, and I'm one of the organizers for this digital workshop. Um, we're really excited to have all of you here. Um, I'm the moderator also for this session. Um, and Vanessa is my co-moderator. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I will go ahead and introduce our presenter for this afternoon. His name is James Yeku. James is um, a professor, an assistant professor of African Digital Humanities in the Department of African and African American Studies at the University of Kansas. And he's currently teaching um, courses on social media and its intersections with Nollywood and other forms of African popular culture. Um, James studies the digital expressions of literatures and cultures of Africa and the African diaspora focusing on African articulations of the digital cultural record. Um, and today's presentation is titled Nollywood's Africa and the Inventions of the American Mind. Um, I will now let James take it away. Okay, thank you, thank you Charlotte. Uh, thank you everyone for being here today. I'm excited to be in conversation with you all. Like Charlotte said, I, I teach courses on African social media and African popular cultures. And Nollywood is one dominant form of African popular cultures. And my understanding is that a number of you are familiar with Nollywood. So I'm excited to share a couple of clips in the next couple of minutes so we can discuss these themes and talk about how they might be useful for some of our pedagogic engagements in our various classrooms. So thank you for being here. It's a great honor to have you in this meeting. Our conversation will focus on how Nollywood films might be incorporated into the classroom in the US to animate pedagogic activities and global cultures and on Africa in particular. But to get started, I would like you to join me in an activity if that's fine. So please, I would invite you to use the chat panel below and I'll show you some images and then I would appreciate if you could just share where you think the following world cities might be located. Well, I just take a wide guess, right? People ready? So this is the first one. Please use the chat, just write the name of the city that comes to mind. Go to the second one. A US city, great. Santa Barbara, great. Lagos, great. That's right. Okay. Ellen says it's New York City. <laughs> Unifier Dyer is asking a question of it's Kenya. You mean Nairobi, right? Okay, Accra. Any other cities? Lagos, smallest east. Okay, great. Okay, let's go to the next image. How about this one? Dubai. Lagos, Rome, Seneca, <laughs> Dakar, Buja. Thank you for participating, everyone. Do we have more answers? Okay, how about this third one? How about just a couple more? So it would be nice if you could be a bit specific when in West Africa, where in in North America, if you like. Lagos, Nigeria, okay. That's from Hadith. Any other any other guess? Abijan. Hmm. 
Nairobi, Johannesburg, great, great, all fantastic answers. Thank you so much. And I think I have one or two more. This is another one. Any quick guess, anyone? Hmm. Nairobi, Johannesburg, the car, Kra. Okay, finally, finally, this would be a city in anyone else? Shanghai, Shanghai, okay. Any other guess, anyone? Just one of Singapore, great, great. Okay, Taiwan. All right, so. Oh, I have two more. How about this? If you're from all oh, Lagos, someone is saying Lagos. The, the, the popular <laughs> Lagos boss is like the Motatu in, I think, in Nairobi. Yahonde, okay. I mean, I'm not saying it's Lagos, Banjo. Now, yellow boss is in other cosmopolitan centers around the world, Banjo. And finally, this is the final one, I promise you. This is an household in what city? Any, any guess, any thoughts, anyone? Abuja, okay. New Orleans, wow. Hmm. Okay, thank you so very much, everyone. The Zongo head of Accra, that's possible. Hmm, that's actually very possible. So very quickly, this is Lagos. So somebody said Lagos, thank you so much. That, that was a very good guess. And this is also Lagos, the new Eco Atlantics, you know, projects being developed. This part of the project is already, you know, standing already and there are more structures being built. Yes, some, someone was right. This is a vision in, in Ivory Coasts. I think Greg got it right. And then of course, this is Accra. A number of you also got this correctly. And this is Nairobi. A lot of people thought this was some country in Asia or a city in Asia. This is Nairobi, the, the Nairobi sky skyline and yes this is lagos this is lagos as a matter of fact there's this song that said this is lagos you have to be smart so when you said this kind of image you know you really have to be smart <laughs> you have to be wise and this is i don't know if it's, if it's the song or area in accra but i know this is this is definitely from accra so thank you so very much for participating and i would go ahead to ask you why do you think the last two images would be more common in the news than the first set of images. Or to put it differently, what images of the city are most common in the news? I, I think the answer is definitely obvious, right? The negative ones, because they become the only dominant images of Africa's representations we'll find in the news. And for me, the reason these negative depictions of Africa persist in the American popular imagination is, is something I would love to explore with you. And yes, because the African narrative in the US is one of overcrowding poverty, chaos, hunger, famine, and, and those kind of details. But I think beyond those details, we also can also, I mean, look at our cultural industry, such as Nollywood, of uh, some kind of redeeming narratives. So to reinforce a racist narrative for justification of colonialism and continued racism. Thank you so much, that's a brilliant one. So let's make some progress because of time. I want to draw your attention to the use of the word inventions in, in my title, which I've taken from the book, Mistaken Africa, Curiosities and Inventions of the African Mind by Cayman Somerville. I use this book in my Introduction to African Studies class, and it's really been super helpful. Now, the book examines the mythologies of the, of the white American, especially about Africa, because according to these authors, 
these mythologies have been the most dominant, the most negative, and the most in need of change. And as they argue, and, and this argument is something I've seen with my own students a lot, Africa exists in the American mind as a, sim a similar crumb. That is a false representation. And this idea of an invented notion that is used, like someone said in the chat, to justify an assumed you know, superiority, which is of course tied to the persistence of coloniality in society today, is, is something that is really striking. And the implication of this is that the complexities and diversity of the continent become reduced to singularities in the American sociocultural imagination. So this book is useful in the way it presents an ideological disruption of stereotypic narratives that people who teach students about Africa will find extremely useful. My presentation draws from this book, but more importantly, I want to, I want to invite us to consider the ways in which an abiding misperception of the continent as a place of negations and crisis remains consolidated in the US and other Western countries. And I'll conclude basically by showing some knowledge of things that remedy this situation, especially through their own narratives. But, but again, we could ask for people who may not be too familiar with Nollywood, what exactly is Nollywood? The moment I hear the name Nollywood, sometimes this aspiration towards Hollywood comes to mind because again of because of the similarity in the names. And this is an iteration you find with Bollywood also. For starters, Nollywood is the Nigerian film industry. And it, it's a fascinating film industry that produces about 2,500 movies every year. And it's the third largest movie industry in the world after Hollywood and Bollywood. And I think the population of these countries have something to do with that. Sometimes, you know, Nollywood overtakes Bollywood in terms of production of production outputs, and it's the second largest film produce, producing industry in the world. But what is important is that when Nollywood started in the 90s, there were present challenges with, with the economy, the, the politics of the, the structural adjustment program of the IMF forced many African countries to foreclose the possibility of narrative pleasures. The cinema houses all over the country closed down. Pentecostal churches took over those spaces. And then those who wanted, wanted to produce films who couldn't you know, take their films to, to, to the cinemas basically decided to use VHS cassette and other rudimentary forms of technologies. They shot their films straight to, to this VHS cassette and distributed them locally among, among people. And this became a massive industry, right? An informal economy emerged from that space such that ordinary people became the custodians of stories about, about places like Lagos, places, about, places like Onsuka, Enugu, Abuja, and, and Waterview. This, this classic era of Nollywood is usually regarded as old Nollywood today. Although, of course, there are links and important connections between the films produced around that period from the 90s to the late 2009s. The, the, the films of that era are usually called old Nollywood. Because from 2010s, because of advancement in digital technologies, a new generation of movie makers arrived on the scene. They began to produce films that were more aesthetically complex, used more sophisticated technologies and you know, represented the Nigerian image and condition as much as they could. Nollywood is usually regarded as a dominant form of Nigerian popular culture. And in a lot of ways, it's actually one of the leading forms of African popular culture generally. And it is one way, it is one of the ways through which the African story or a positive image of Africa is circulated in the global media landscape. I, do digital humanities as, as a professor in Kansas. And one of the things I do is to be invested in how computational tools and digital affordances can be used to reconstruct the history of, of film in Nigeria. Specifically, I've been collecting a number of Nollywood posters, especially from the old Nollywood era, in order to think about what the history of the video film might look like in, in Nigeria. 
I believe that kind of, I mean, this kind of project is necessary if only because the material elements of the production of Nollywood were often abandoned or trashed or thrown away. So most of the VHS cassette produced in the 90s and the 2000s were either trashed or reused. So Nollywood was producing a vast archive of fames, but at the same time, the material means of productions, the material elements of productions were being discarded. And so I, I thought about how fame paratest like posters could be used to track the historical evolution of Nollywood. And that's what I do with my digital Nollywood project, where I, I mean, that allows me to use the, the open source platform of Maker to collect and curate Nollywood posters as a form of digital exhibition. So Omeka is this very nice platform where you do both digital collection and digital exhibition. And the neat thing about both is that while you collect materials on Omeka, you can actually tell a story about your collection and that becomes an exhibition. So if you go on Digital Nollywood, which, which is still an experimental project that is still ongoing, I'm still adding material, developing metadata and those kind of things, you'll find a number of posters that attempt to you know, be part of this reconstructive project for the history of the video film in a country. The other aspect of the, uh, of the project, such as an oral history of Hollywood veterans, I have uh, an image here to my right, probably to your left on the screen, that presents some kind of network analysis of relations in, in some Nollywood movies. The idea is to visualize the history of Nollywood and just to think about what it means to do to do Nollywood studies, to study fame and popular culture through other means other than writing articles and and publishing books. New knowledge ecology, such as the digital platforms to help us study Nollywood. But all of those may not be too important. I think what is important is to get back to the objective of this presentation and just to repeat that I'm interested in how a certain image of Africa persists as an invention of the American media and cultural environment. And then to, to look at the ways in which Nollywood, and this is important, look at the ways in which Nollywood, despite its own documented limitations, response to this to this crisis of image in relation to the continent. I'll have us to do just, I mean, if you don't mind, just one more activity. I want to show you a couple of images from an Instagram parody account. And let's think through the assumptions of these images. So we we can, you know, extend the conversation. So the first image is this. I just want you to read through the post if that's fine, please. And in the chat again, you may want to tell me what you think is ongoing in terms of this politics of the African image or this politics of the image of Africa that I argue remains sedimented in many ways in the African, in the American imagination. Please, you can use the chat, mission trip, exactly. Thanks, Kelly, mission trip. My bags are packed, my heart's ready and, and hands open to love and those sweet, sweet orphans in the country of Africa. I hope they like me because I already love them. What do you think is happening? What do you think is, is ongoing in this image? If people are done with this, I'd like us to follow Barbie to quote and unquote the country of Africa. Okay, so clothing emphasizes inauthenticity of the intent and the artificiality of the savior. I think this is on this image. Thank you, Judy. And please keep the comments going, keep them coming. This is another image. So Barbie has arrived on the continent, the great white hope, the great white hope, great. The people living in the country of Africa are some of the most beautiful humans, she says. I ever, I have, okay, the most beautiful humans I have ever laid eyes on. I feel so insignificant next to my new friend, Promise. She has no running water, no makeup, no clothes. 
But uh, once she self has shown a no strict diet to follow, figure is kept flawless, blah, blah, blah. What do you think is happening? She has nothing, but she still has a raw beauty and Jesus and now me. She has a raw beauty. She's got Jesus. And of course, she's got me, the, the white savior. When I screen grab poverty porn, thanks, Unifier Dyer. When I screen grab this, I saw a comment and I thought I would include it in this. It says, this account is pretty clever, definitely funny, but look at this way. The people you parody are, are annoying, but they're over there and, and often are put to work by local councils doing actual things that improve the lives of rural Africans. So this is somebody coming in defense of the missionaries who go to different parts of the African continent or even the NGOs who go there. And this person is trying to basically push back at this parody account. So keep all of this in mind as we think about the kind of images of Africa that seems to persist out there. Okay, we're back to Barbie. We take so much for granted in America. Popkin, Spice, Lattes, Chick-fil-A, Ogboat, Yoga. I'll never view my rights the same way after hauling my own water today. This is the reality of so many poor Africans. I even broke a heel. For Christ's sake, I broke a heel. Now I think I understand what it means to be broken in order to be made whole. Pay attention to the Christian rhetoric in some of these expressions, the, the evangelical discourse that seems to embed all of this. I'm not going to lie, I was frustrated, but I got a tan and did even more soul searching. There's always a silver lining. Yes, it's all about them. <laughs> Gina says she understands. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wanted to call attention to this, one of the images she, she has posted and in the response of, of some of her followers on Instagram, how I feel about this. It's funny because it's so true. I hate this account so much. But what does this image evoke? What does it remind you of? Malaria, somebody mentioned diseases earlier. Yes, more poverty point. This is a wonderful piece of heart of the National Museum of African art that speaks to how they gasp and focus on how it's destroyed village life. It's in the shape of a seven great. Okay, I think we should wrap up with this. That's about two or three more. Sure. So, so Barbie Savior finds a beautiful creature all by himself solitary, destitute, nobody to care for him. So obviously she does what every white savior does and that is to adopt him. His name is Aslan. I don't know if, if there are people who are, who are familiar with the work of C.S. Lewis, the Chronicles of Narnia, and you think of Aslan and the image, imagery of, you know, naming this particular lion Aslan. But again, do not forget that no animals were harmed in the capturing of this particular moment, she says. She wants you to know that, right? <laughs> okay. The focus of this is just to think together about the different ways even young people today still think about Africa to the extent that a parody account such as this is pushing back at some of those narratives. Then I think she has an epiphanic moment. She says, I have noticed people informing me that Africa is a continent. Thank God she finally gets it. I hope you can forgive my mistake, she says. I have so much to learn, but I do know one thing for certain. Now, this is what she knows. And that is that my love for this place is bigger than any country. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Even bigger than the country of Africa. Okay, so. We, we see what is ongoing here. At first she was scared. She was scared of my white skin, but I know we will learn each other. We are bound together by spirit and, I, and our humanity. And now by clothes, I feel like murdering all of these children, all of this country's children. I was chosen for this. 
is there anything problematic about some of these images, about some of the language here? Let's keep all of those in mind. If you have any comments in the chat, please put it in there. The strange defensiveness of the insensitive soccer mom, of course. Hmm. So, what is going to take my photo? At the core of all of this is this idea of the white man's burden mentality. Yeah, that's one. That's one. Thank you, Candace. Another is, I think, is this idea of digital volunteerism, right? She's curating, obviously, for social media, and it becomes a matter of performance, basically, performing a work of charity and then using social media to curate the whole process. And I wonder what she means when she says, I took the road less traveled. I forged my own path. I, wear, I went where no one has gone before, but the question remains, who is going to take my photo? Who is going to take my photo? So the selfie in this case becomes the emblematic tool of, of, of self-projection as, I mean, as it is consistent with the name. Okay, so, oh, one, do I have a couple more? I think I'll just leave the rest of this and then move on to say that these kinds of images actually, of course, predate the social media era, especially as this, you know, this magazines on, on the screen show. I, I'm sure a lot of people here are familiar with the Tazanistic images that are so rife in Hollywood and how the idea of Africa as the political jungle, the idea of the jungle again comes back into, into play. And I, I believe they go back to this historical mis misrepresentation of the continent that arose from colonial encounters. So you had to create an archive of stories in order to justify the colonial dispossession of a people, of a place, right? It's like the, the founders get into North America and coming up with the idea of terra nullius, empty land, and it of manifest destiny creates different kind of narratives and mythologies to justify colonial oppression. So beyond social media, beyond the Instagram parodies, all of these narratives go back. The Nigerian novelist Chinua Achebe in his response to Joseph Conrad's Out of Darkness argues that the racist depictions of Africa in Out of Darkness is born out of a, to quote Ade, to quote Achebe, quote, the desire one might even argue, Achebe, Achebe says, the need in Western psychology to set Africa up as a foil to Europe, as a place of negations at once remote and vaguely familiar in comparison with which Europe's own state of spiritual grace becomes manifest. In other words, to show the glory of Europe, Joseph Conrad in Art of Darkness, add to trash an entire continent, right? So River Thames is just opposed with river, the River Congo and the majesty and, the, and the, the beauty of the Thames becomes just opposed for the, you know, the barbarity, so to speak, of the Congo and of course the whole heart of darkness. The, 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 there's a lot of stuff, a lot of modernist literature on Joseph Conrad and we can get to that, but my point precisely is how Africa is, you know, set up as a fight to Europe. And this is something I think might still be on, I mean, might still be on today. Beyond print media, Hollywood is, you know, another site of misrepresentation for, for another misrepresentation of Africa. And I, I know that we have Black Panther and many, several other films that try to redeem these narratives. But Wakanda aside, the images from Hollywood create single stories about Africa and the circular stereotypes that are offensive mental models of a large continent. And th this gets me to Chimamanda Deche's very popular TED Talk, The Danger of a Single Story. I imagine a lot of you know that important TED Talk. And I, I, one of the things Deche says that I find striking is how the single story creates stereotypes. And she says the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue, but that they are incomplete. They make one story become the only story, right? So at the beginning, if you remember the, the images we started with, we saw 
images of Lagos, beautiful ones, but we also saw chaotic Lagos, right? Places in Lagos that, that may not be too, you know, beautiful, just like the beautiful Accra city was also just opposed with an household in Accra, not too beautiful. But the stereotype begins when you take the, the mostly the negative image and you make it the central defining narrative of a people, of a place and, and what a view. So the single story therefore consolidates the workings of hegemony, the workings of power. And Adichie says, power is the ability not to tell the story of another person. That's not power. Power is actually when you tell the story of a person in such a way that that story becomes the definitive story of that person. And for, for me, I think that's really significant and therefore demands a need for a balance of stories when discussing people, groups, or even an entire continent. So basically, the persistent view is an unbalanced view of Africa as a sick and troubled place, an exotic place, a helpless and hopeless and unchanging continent. And for me, it's about how the agency of Africa and its identity are being shaped by these Western narratives. And then the value of Nollywood as a cinematic space that redefines Africa's narrative, which is the next section of this talk. And, and, I'm, and I'm really sorry if this talk has, has not been as optimistic as it could be, right? Some of these things could be depressing. But perhaps the realities may still be with us, right? People remember some decades ago when a certain American president called African nations. Can I say that word here? Okay, well, you guys remember, right? Decades ago, oh, no, that was two years ago, as a matter of fact. <laughs> okay. So something else, and to close with this, that the coverage of COVID in Africa by US news outlets, by many media, media organizations in Europe, it's been such that, again, recirculate and reconsolidate this kind of narrative. And this Washington Post shot here, somebody says, Michael Gass and coronavirus present a crisis for Africa. We have a duty to help. This sounds like the Barbie savior, you know, character earlier. The, 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 the idea of the Western person as a chosen, anointed, you know, figure who has to help a continent in crisis. And yeah, the economist says we have a big take on COVID-19 and why it may eat Africa harder than elsewhere. And then the world became startled when the pandemic in Africa probably did nothing as serious as, as it has done in many other parts of the world. And I'm sad, like any other person, about this, you know, this death that have happened elsewhere. But think about the necropolitics of all of this, the circulation of of narratives on death, how it is covered in the African context and the way it's covered in, say, Europe or parts of Europe or, or in the US. So today we know that Africa has not been wiped out by COVID. The nightmarish scenarios painted as in none of them have happened. And we are again reminded that these stories and this image of Africa persists. So finally, we get to the fun parts. The place of Nollywood in seeking to correct these assumptions, especially by showing the best of, of Nigerians. As people who dance, as people who make love, who fall in love, who have legitimate businesses that, that fund their parties and, and their social lives. Positive images about the Nigerian prince, right? Those kind of, those kind of things. So, I like to very quickly show an e my, my first clip, if that's fine. Just one minute, please. Please, are you able to see my YouTube screen? Yes. Thanks. Thanks. So, this is a first clip I want us to. 
view together. James says no sound though. There's no sound. There isn't any sound. Make no. sure you click on the uh, button, re uh, stop sharing and then reshare and then click stop on the share. And when you reshare, there's a, an option to, to share sound at the bottom before you actually click on the yes, image. Yes, yes, I see it. Thank you so much. Okay. And it's something new. Okay. Good. That is for the family table. This is for the bride. This is wrong. All right, this is, that's better. Get up here, it's ruining me! Oh, God. Ah! Don't hate the player, just hate the game. Well, this player is getting married today. Son of Lady Obianuju Ounka. That is correct. Dog Tata with a carpaccio option for starters. Ah! I'm not about to let the cocos poison my guests. Where's Oladuni Coca? <laughs> This guy, you are the Hi! Hey, should I have even charge them double bright price? Oh, oh my gosh. Have fun for me, brothers. I need a new best man. Fine, Shola, you are now the best man. Please don't make me regret this. What is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have it. Please tell me that didn't just happen. Uh, it's not that bad. Harrison, let's go. I bet I should call my tailor. Oh, Madam. Have you gone in her phone? She's not picking. Her phone's with me, ma. Calm down, calm down. Mama, my daughter has been kidnapped. You don't need to calm down. The only person who has been kidnapped here today is my son. By that useless daughter of yours. Amy! Uh -huh. You will have asked for him if he does not. Why is she going in for? Because we are the onlookers. The bride's family. Dance is first. What about if we... Just don't sing together. Yeah, yeah. Um, Swish. I don't tell you, say I'd be thief. I know be robber. Okay, thief, robber, please, what's the difference? Oh, you think this is a joke? Please, please. Uh, I'm sure my boss didn't mean any harm. <laughs> the boss didn't mean any harm. I, I, like I said, I'm not a member of their family. How does a man stay with one woman for the rest of his life. Poor to me, so inexperienced. Just in case you're confused, this is where it goes in. <laughs> you need to do the fun and spontaneous things to and for him. I understand that you may not like Duni, but you need to understand that I love her and that is never going to change. I have never needed anyone in my life the way that I need you. Are you gonna be my lover? Yes. Every person plotting evil against their marriage. No mercy. Joy by fire. Hey, 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 hey. Are you gonna be my lover? Yes. So Pentecostalism is a big deal in Nigeria. It's the evangelical, I mean, there are Pentecostals in the US, so people I mean, get a sense of this from an evangelical perspective also. So you find that really embedded in some of these themes in a way that, that really gets at the heart of everyday culture that, that, that gets represented in Nollywood. I want to play the second part of that clip, the, 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 the sequel to that particular theme, just to wrap up that. So, excuse me. Okay. I get sick when I'm far away from you for so long. I lose sleep and when I get I'll be right back. Don't move. <laughs> Yes. Baby, oh baby, you're like medicine to me. Give me everything I need. 
He proposed by accident? What's wrong? Why are you shouting? Do you want Deirdre to hear you? How could you let this happen? Hello? Is it me that proposed to her? Shit. So what are you gonna do? My body now your own, oh baby. I'm getting married. What is that exactly? Let's see. Three years? China, come on! It's not me, it's those people. We want to have the wedding next month. Next month? We want to take it to Dubai. We're behind you. Just take all of us to Dubai. It's Young John, the wicked producer. Okay. So sorry, just for a minute. Okay, so if you would forgive some of the melodramatic outbursts for a minute, you'll probably get a sense of what is actually at play in some of these videos. I mean, in both, in, in both parts of the same theme, you have this idea of ordinary Nigerians. Of course, I admit middle-class Nigerians in this contest as people will make love, fall in love, people will have sex, people will have parties. The kind of images you don't get to see on your day to day, you know, viewing of say, CNN or Fox News. This is not Africa, or if you like Nigeria to be specific, as a place of crisis. It's a place of conviviality. It's a place where people perform pleasure, right? And that matters a lot. Uh, but, uh, uh, Sorry, one minute. If I get to the next video, that matters a lot, especially in the context of a continent that has been repeatedly battered in, in the discourse over representation, at the arena of representation, basically, the image, a certain image of Africa persists, and then Nollywood comes into the mix to try to redeem that kind of image. I would argue that thus the party culture I have just you know, shown through the wedding party one and two is itself an important metaphor for something else that, that is ongoing in, in the country. So the movies show how parties are sometimes central to everyday culture and politics in the country. Parties are spaces for the enactment of social pleasures. And this is despite the realities of economic hardships here and there. So there may be hunger, there may be hardship in some parts of Nigeria, but we don't get to see other parts of the country in which hunger, disease, poverty are not necessarily the reality. And I think the approach here is to insist on a balance of stories. And that is what I think Nollywood does. So in the Bling Legotions, for example, for instance, another film that is focused on the party culture, we get this idea of the power of materialism and class divisions among the rich again. And, and through a Nollywood film, we see how it's possible to want to keep up with the Joneses in, 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 in a Nigerian contest that is really interesting. So if it's fine, I would, I would love to 
play a clip from the Bling Leg Oceans, more like a particular scene, I think, just for a minute. So I'll bring back my browser. My party must be unrivaled in the land of eco-partydom and with even more splendor than my 50th. The big boys and the inner caucus of the Lagos elite. The custodians of Lagosian class. The 1% of the 1%. Frankly, anyone who hasn't received an invitation should sit back and reassess their reason for being on this planet in the first place. Now. Is there anything you don't understand? Any questions? Mrs. Holloway, mm. I'm way ahead of you already. Very good. Shall we begin? Indeed. Now, I would like to use the courtyard. No, no, no. No, I'm thinking interior for this one. Oh, but is the space large enough? You mean your palatial mansion? Of course it is. I'm thinking Nigerian paradise. Mm. The gods of old, it's electric, Shango, and you. My beautiful goddess will be Yemoja, coral everywhere. Oh. Hmm. Let's see, what do we have here? Ah. I love this. Drums over here, greenery on the walls, and your family, my darling, will sit right there. Mm. And over here, hmm, we will have the band. Well, I was. <laughs> Apologies. Apologies, Mrs. Holloway. You can't interrupt me when the room is telling me what it wants to become. Mm. <sighs> Blue. The ceilings, the walls. It's reminiscent of a tranquil environment. Something like a seaside that will be sure to steal the show. Oh, no, 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 no. This is my party. Nothing animate or inanimate should steal the show. <laughs> So therefore, and I flowers can... cascading down the walls, an orchid wall over here. Get Adela on the phone immediately. It's going to be, think an Oyo and a Benin Empire merger. It's culture is spicy, but still very classy. I like that. Of course you do. So make sure all the decorators have all the information. I'll forward you the logistics of the event. And um, should we be expecting an advance by check? Oh, commence immediately. I'll be sending you in advance shortly. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, ma, but um, I just need a date to put on for, just for the books. Uh, am I sensing a recession in trust here, Venya? Since when? Paul. Leave. In there, at the mobile lola. Uh-uh. But you know your boy is always loyal. But you know our country take B. Commence, Vanya. If the word of Mupelola Holloway does not hold water, then I, frankly, I don't know why we're having this business discussion. Uh, no, sorry, Auntie. Um, I'll make the orders right away. Mm -hmm. um, we'll make a history like we did last year. Mm. I like the sound of yeah, that. Yeah, of course, ma. Um, but I have to be going. Uh, I'll see you next week. Oh, oh one more thing. <clears throat> not a word to the press. Not even one single picture on your Instagram page. Nothing. The preparations for the party this year are going to be very quiet. Uh, um, of course, in line with uh, being exclusive. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma, I understand. I'm good to go now, okay? It's uh, good to see you. Mm -hmm. I trust you. Ma, where do ma? Where do ma? Yes, Kilode. Ah, <laughs> I will come back. It's so, just... Roger. Eh, hey, okay. Thank you, ma. Eh, um, it's not like you just come to the subway. Just pay, you come to say thank you for everything I do now. Like, you understand? God will always bless you. And people will say, Some, somebody that brings a cola nut, that brings a happiness. You understand? It's not like we bring cola nut. But but it's true, it's true, it's true. Is there a point to all this rambling? Yes, uh, that's yes, that's a um, point to the bribery when you talk. But, madam, <laughs> you know not know, you know how to go to a point. Madam, we, uh, all of us, your worker, we love you. And we are in twap. And we just say, make we no hide down from you. That we're going to need salary to keep away from the bondage. How could you be so insensitive? 
Uh, uh, Madam, we know, we know Karin set this side. Here I am, stressed out from organizing my 51st birthday party. And then you bring up a matter of, of your salaries. Well, it, it's fine. It's fine. If you choose to be oblivious to the fact that our monies are tied up in several business concerns, and... and uh, uh, Madam, you're and, crying. Uh, 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 Madam, no crying. Madam, please Madam, don't no cry. You decided Madam, not to treat Madam, me Madam, like... Well, Madam, you have to emotion. One you have big, to emotion. Madam, 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 you are crying again. Madam, happy family. We are all one big family. You tell us to put it. I know that means I'm an emotional person. If you cry now, the emotion will catch me. Madam, I'm not going to How much is money? Hey, look on the whole answer. How much is salary? Madam, thank you. What do you want salary for? Eh, don't to buy clothes, to buy, to buy, eh, uh, shoes. Yeah, then you can come back. It's not, it's not, it's not by what we call our salary. You can come, come back. You can come back. So, so what is happening here is the this particular family is facing financial hardship. Yet the matriarch of the home insists on having uh, an extravagant wedding, better party, I should say. And from what you have seen, you probably get a sense of this performance of elitism and class that doesn't take into account the struggles of the everyday people who, who work for them. And it's something to show the length many people would go just to be able to throw a wedding party, right? But I, I think it's important to make this point about how Nollywood shows the party culture in the country or the ways in which Nollywood tries to redeem an African, you know, pessimistic image by offering narratives of pleasures and conviviality. We can do all of those, but we also need to keep in mind that Nollywood itself has its layers of contradictions. And by that, I'm thinking of how, for instance, the industry has always circulated a certain image of women as 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 inferior to men, a patriarchal culture that objectifies women, and th this for me is really important in, in in terms of thinking about on the one hand, the very important labor of the industry to make visible positive narratives, positive images of Africa, but on the other hand, in doing some of this, in 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 doing that, you also have other kind of issues, right? We may argue, as a matter of fact, that knowledge was started by undermining female power for patriarchal capitalism. And I would say one of its earliest narratives was inaugurated through the death of its first female protagonist. And I'm thinking about the film Living in Bondage, which is usually regarded as a first commercial on video in, in Nigeria's famous video film industry. So for this film, the narrative arc is constructed around Andy Okeke, who and, and, and the wife, Merit, who both confronted with economic hardships, seek legitimate means of, of overcoming their financial difficulties. Now, while Merit patiently supports her husband through her own income, the husband succumbs to peer influence and pursues ill-gotten wealth by deciding to sacrifice his wife to a satanic cause, you know, which promises him a lot of riches. In the end of the day, Andy becomes rich and Merit dies. Although she dies by cursing Andy, we get a sense that she had to be erased as, as it were, in order for the man to, to get his, you know, his, his financial power. So that, there are those very problematic narratives in Nollywood in terms of its problem with, with, with gender trouble, its depiction of excessive materialism. And I, I just wanted to put out, I, I wanted to put that out there as a way of saying we need to not just be too excited about the power of knowledge to tell the African story that we become you know, forgetful of some of, the, some of the problematics of the industry itself. But as I begin to bring all of this together, I would like to show how in recent times, from the image I have here in terms of the, the one on Nollywood contributions, living in bondage, the poster immediately suggests that this is from Hold Nollywood, films from the 90s. And, and, and these are the films where you have, I mean, that's thematic dissonance in terms of the representation of women and other, other problematic narratives. But from the two, 2010s and up to now, you have new Nollywood movies that try to, again, 
contest this this power of knowledge to objectify women or just to 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 show Africa in a certain light. It's possible that, and ironically, despite the fact that Nollywood can redeem the African image, it's possible that Nollywood, as a matter of fact, also cements certain perception of Africa as a place of excessive emotional emotions, of rituals, you know, materialism, and those kind of things. And I think it's important to to have that in mind, to keep to, to keep that in mind. But again. To also think about how new directors are challenging such views as well. So if you allow me to go to Netflix, I think I have my Netflix account on, I would like to show a film, one of the one of the Nollywood films you will find on Netflix, Wives on Strike. And the reason I chose this particular film is just to give a sense of how women are becoming vocal, especially Nollywood's women directors are becoming vocal in terms of challenging the triker sensibilities in a way that is really, you know, that is really effective, especially through their, their film narratives. Wives on Strike follows a story of, again, everyday women, unlike the, the middle class rich people we find in films like The Wedding Party and The Bling Legosians. These are women in Lagos struggling to make ends meet and they're also trying to, you know, do something very positive for themselves. One of them, as a matter of fact, is, is interested in vying for office. And this is this these are the kind of stories you you have been proliferated on Netflix, showing women as empowered subjects. So if it's fine, I'll just quickly show this. Charlotte, I don't know how am I doing for time. I hope I can still show this and one other clip before I wrap up. Trying to, just one minute, please, Netflix. Yeah, I can say, I think you can um, show maybe just one more. Okay. I tell you, I miss you. Oh, thank you. But when we now go to London, I now, I now go to know say to speak English is is it not a something that is very simple. Uh -huh. So now I can speak it very well. Very good. Yeah, to, 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 to queen. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know they don't talk up. They talk um, queen in it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but now you forgot how they, they say it this way. Oh. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I'm like, hey, I can't speak on you, but when your mouth sweet, yes, oh, so. Sweet, like, you're going to money, you know what they do for their yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, you don't talk your own, everybody don't talk yeah. your own. As now, don't come, come back now. Meeting, don't do meet. What is left? What you carry, come, we go. Do was better. Mm. Mm. Plenty of this place. things. Mm. Yeah, Lodger, mm? a lot of things. Yes. Well done. But the most important one be say, women for day get better hand for government. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Girls yeah. for day. Eh? This way, way be woman matter. Yeah. Go make go job carry them for day. Yes. Mm. Yes. What do we do for this place? Uh, uh, that mm. one says small. <laughs> yeah. Mm? If um, um if a man fights a woman. Uh -huh. The man's mm. way. See the dog story. Ah. Mm -mm. You know, it is say I they talk about one. I'm not. I'm not talking about one. I'm talking about general language. All women, like all of us now, we're a woman. So if a woman, women. Oh, that came to bore you. Chop up all the money. I be one with the gun. Belly wallet. Oh, this one. 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 So see, if a man do something to women. Is the uh, man's day we carry? Three. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Madam Bella. Yes. Yes. Sir. Not so? Yes. 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 Any woman where constant saying, I mean, won't do this thing, I mean, won't contest, go, rally on that. Yes. So now, now I work with that now. Yes. Very good. Mm. Mama. Hmm? I won't run. Mother, you won't run. Go where? Mama, no. I. I won't run for local government. Councillor. 
I'm just eating my thing. You mean to say what? My friend, my friend. I'm just eating my thing. Why not? Because all she needs is standard six, and standard six is pretty much primary school. Mama Gossi is more than qualified. I check. Ha! Hey, Mama Gossi! Ma. See me. Hey. Hey. Look me, where we. Hey, your daughter. I did your back. Mm. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Mm. <laughs> no, be yes, that I want to know, book on. I put that there. Hey. Hello. Fashion, that one can come. What do I do? I put that there. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Mm. <laughs> How about the Omolu Abi? Ah, Omotori Ekwe. Hmm. And you want to come now, so I put that there. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Come and come. How many welcome? Ah. You got them, they say, welcome to Kansela. We got you. No matter. Oh, see, what are you doing? Hey! 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 Never. Because Nami be the man of this house. And I said, no, no is no. My husband, help me think this thing. Mangosi, Kukuma help me wear this trousers. Uh, uh, Mangosi. You want me man, eh? You want me man of the house? Mangosi, never Kukuma reach Kukuma help me wear this trousers. I'll call me. 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 OK, so because of time, I'll just wrap things up. The, the point here is to show how Recent Nollywood directors are challenging this Petrika culture that is still very much rooted in the country. And again, beyond this external engagement with a certain image of the country, with a certain image of, of, the, of the continent, there's also this internal struggle over representation in relation to issues like gender, even what it means to be, say, a Yoruba person versus an able person, different, Nigeria has about 500 languages, different ethnic groups, and how you represent all of those, how the tensions often created when all of those collide, uh, cinematically portrayed, sometimes may lead to, you know, misrepresentations, and you have new directors trying to, to work on those. I need to wrap up quickly, sorry. We go. I so the image of the Nigerian prince, a, a stereotype that is common in in in, in the US a, a lot. I, I the point is to say that Nollywood has always shined light on the good and the bad. So we, we see that with this with this film, which you can find on Netflix. It shows the realities of the scam culture in the country, but it also plugs into its transnational dimension. Nigerian scammers, are, the scamming culture, internet scam is not peculiar to Nigeria. As a matter of fact, if you read the literature on internet scam, Nigeria is not, it's just one of many countries, right? There are many other countries. The first 10 countries, depending on what source you're citing, doesn't even include Nigeria in terms of the top scamming, you know, countries on it. And I'm not saying that to defend the country. I'm saying Nollywood shows this, you know, this engagement in terms of its good and the bad. There's a thing called the, a, a scam culture, the 419 environment. But also, this film stressed the effort of the Nigerian government. This film stressed the way ordinary Nigerians reject the scam culture, right? So when somebody receives an email from a Nigerian person and the stereotype of the Nigerian prince comes into play. Again, it's, it goes back to this kind of representations that, that want to see Africa in a certain way. Finally, Nollywood also, the, in, in recent years, taps into the, um, the global cultural economy. I, I wish, I, I thought I could show a clip on a Nigerian politician who, who was obsessed with Trumpian politics, the way Trump used social media. And, you know, this, this man was a businessman, got into politics and won, modeled his political campaign after Trump. So what, what's really at play in, in this is, despite the racism of the former American president, you find a lot of Nigerians who actually loved Trump. There was a Washington Post report about Nigerians 
you know, Trump lovers, because again of this evangelical connections, right? Nigeria is a religious country and a lot of people, it has a lot of supporters in the country. So a, a Nollywood director decides to do a film about a businessman who models his campaign after Trump and eventually won. But by the end of the narrative, and I'm, I'm talking about Your Excellency, I don't know if I have it here. The, Your Excellency is the, is the title of the film. By the end of the narrative, this politician decides not to take a call from a fictional Trump will cause him to congratulate him. Rather, he decides to take a call from Obama. In, in, in that instance, you find the director, you know, basically stating an ideological tension between Republican values and Democrat values. Democrats, I mean, in terms of the party. So you, you find themes that, that plug into the global cultural economy and comment on world issues and in, in, in terms of Namaste Wala, which is a Bollywood, Nollywood production, th th this issue of, you know, of, of marriage cultures colliding, the, the, the party culture again comes back into play and you have a transnational treatment of the, 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 the topic on conviviality, which I mentioned earlier. So put all of this together, I would just, suggest a couple of films I think may be useful for people who want to take some of these conversations up in a classroom space for grade six, grade seven, high schoolers, and I mean, those categories of students, probably, probably not for grade ones to three or four, but for anyone who wants to look at some of these things, a number of them are on Netflix, Lion Art, a Netflix original that provides a necessary feminist argument, but centered on Nigerian entrepreneurial culture. I, this, th this is a really good one. Then October 1. October 1 reflects on Nigeria's political independence by tracking the, the transgenerational effects of the colonial school system. Just like in Canada, you have a transgenerational effect of the residential school. That kind of theme is, is reflected in this particular theme. I, I, I think it's a good one. Student can relate with this. And then EJ is, uh, American students would love how EJ presents immigrant communities in the US as sometimes also vulnerable to the travesties of the American justice system. I, I would recommend that for sure. And perhaps to find out on The Figurine, which is a philosophical movie that you know, engages with questions of science and religion ends with a very provocative question of what do you believe, right? It's, it, it's, it's one of the new, it's by one of the new generation of Nollywood, Nollywood film producers doing fantastic and amazing work. And then finally, you have two weeks in Lagos, a 2020 film that depicts the Pentecostalization of everyday life, the place of religion in society and the dangers of arranged, uh, arranged marriages. These films, I believe could be used in the classroom to, engage students who are interested in cultures beyond the US. And again, just to offer this other image of Nigeria, of different African countries that are often not seen on CNN or on Fox News. I think I'll wrap up with that and say thank you for your time. Happy to take questions and hear your views. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much, um, Dr. This has been very entertaining for me. <laughs> um, I will open up the room for comments, questions. We have about 10 minutes to do that. So sorry for taking up all of the time. Oh, well, that's okay. We were learning. I'm sorry, I had to sit down at the point. I was getting really tired. <laughs> if people have questions, comments, happy to discuss. I see some. I see comments, comments the but they are mostly thank yous from the chat. Oh, there's a question from yeah, Judy. Judy, would you like to ask a question? Hmm. 
I was just wondering if you had uh, suggestions for short films. I mean, the way you showed the clips was really effective, I think. Um, yeah. You know, that could be done, but I just wondered if you have any suggestions for short film. Oh, uh, thank you, Judy. That's a good one. I haven't seen a lot, right? Unlike Hollywood, where you have an established film industry where those kind of things are possible. You, you, you don't have film makers who do shots, short narratives, because of course the point of all of this is to make money. So you want to give people the best something long and except it's a, it's a social, social issue narrative and it probably could be shot 30 minutes for five minutes, but I don't find a lot of those around. What about historic film? Are there yes. any films? That, hmm. Yeah, so October 1, for instance, is a good historic, I mean, based on Nigerian colonialism, British colonialism in Nigeria. And I think that's a, a really good one. Netflix has just added Queen Amina, which is something based on the Queen Amina from North Nigeria and eponymous film on that important female protagonist from, from Northern Nigeria. So that, for instance, is a good way to tell students that Northern Nigeria is not just about Boko Haram. And as a matter of fact, Boko Haram is just, it's happening in a very tiny part of Northeastern Nigeria, right? So Konamino gives you a, a very good, useful historical explanation of cultural and religious processes in, in the north of the country. Thank you. So October 1 and, and Queen Amina would be, would be good themes for, for historical documentation. And there's also 76, a film about the Nigerian civil war and the death of one of Nigeria's former military president, 76, it's also on Netflix. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And just a clarification, James, the film uh, by Genevieve is Lion's Heart, right? I think it's what Lion's Heart. What is it called? Some, I, yeah, someone wanted to know. You had it in the pictures, but you didn't have the title. Yeah, I think it's Lion Heart, just one okay. word, Lion Heart. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Sharon, for, for confirming that. Yeah, someone yes, has yes. Sharon is talking about Lionat, the, the issues with the, the, the academic pictures some years ago. It wasn't considered, I mean, it was nominated at the point, but because they, they thought it spoke I mean, the film used a lot of English. It wasn't considered a foreign language film. And it raised a lot of questions about coloniality, the idea of language. What, what, when is English an African language? And when is English not an African language? So that could be a good, I mean, a good example of a film that raises all of those kind of arguments. Yes, we teach the importance of decolonizing the mind through language. You can't have decolonization without using African languages. But what happens when we have a continent, part of the continent in which English has been localized and you have a flavor or a tradition or a version or a variant of lack of English that is distinctively African or Nigerian or South African, should you deny? <laughs> I mean, so the politics of, of the of the award was such that Lion Art had to suffer some kind of exclusion because of the politics of language. It's a good film to also show. I mentioned it just to buttress the point on, on the feminism, the, how Nigerian films are increasingly feminist in their, in their meditations, the like, or their representations. Yeah, I've watched um... Lion's Heart, it's a very good one. And I don't like Nigerian <laughs> movies, <laughs> but Lion's Heart is a very good movie. I totally recommend it. And I think uh, it's on Netflix, yeah. Charlotte, I think I'm a bit forgiven today, just today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, you've won me over now. <laughs> okay. I'll as long as you like, them. as long as you love Nigerian jollof rice, that's good. Yes, I love jollof. <laughs> I love Nigerian food for sure. And, and American, 
an American student told me some weeks ago that they preferred Ghanaian jollof to Nigerian jollof. And I asked if they had eaten Nigerian jollof before, and they said yes. But they had it that the Nigerian jollof had been cooked by a Ghanaian. And I just, okay, now I understand why you prefer Ghanaian jollof. You need to hit Nigerian jollof and I mean, it's it, it would be a great idea. At KU, we have this film and food festival. You have the Nigerian love the background, and you have some Nollywood films. It's usually a great experience. Hoping the pandemic can allow us to go back to such events. Anyway. We have one last question, James, in the chat before we close. Judy, Judy do you mind asking you. your question? EJ. EJ is a Nigerian film. It's not Chinese. Did it, what did it say? Something about Chinese on it, spelled that way. Hmm. Or you don't worry about it. I mean, I can look it up. I just wondered if there was an overlap. So it's a Chinese and yan. So it's 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 an Igbo word, Chinese. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You you you. So Chinese will be an anglicized version of Chinese, which is an Igbo word. Okay, got you. Thank you. You're welcome. Kelly also has a question. Kelly, do you mind asking? Sure. Um, thank you. I this was an awesome presentation, and I can think of so many things that I can do um, with my relatively uh, young students, like early middle school, um, and. I was looking through the database uh, that you mentioned that you shared with us, and I noticed one poster for uh, an animated film. And I was just wondering, like my students are obsessed with that kind of stuff. So I was wondering if that is becoming like a burgeoning thing within Nollywood or whether or not there's anything you'd recommend for younger students, like uh, 10 to 12, that might be uh, a good thing to, to share with them. I know that not all animated films are for kids, but. Yeah, th thanks, Kelly. That's really helpful to think about. The, the, the science fiction genre, the animation genre, unfortunately, are just only beginning to get serious attention in Hollywood, right? And uh, I don't know how to say this without sounding offensive to Hollywood, but the thing is, there's an established tradition, and this is not just Hollywood, this is the storytelling tradition in the country generally. There's an established tradition that borrows from the conventions and the aesthetics of science fiction already. So you have films on magical realism, you have films that emphasize some of these other aesthetics in, in, in the science fiction genre. And so it's only in recent times you have people paying attention to, to science fiction. A couple, one or two of them exist out there and I, I could, I don't know if you leave, if, if you leave an email, I could send you some titles. I can't think of them right now, but I know that I've seen a couple of, you know. Sorry examples. to put you on the spot, but thank you. I can do that. That would be wonderful. Thanks, Kelly. They are so, Kelly, there are so many uh, books, science fiction books. I don't know if you've come across those. I think Nandi Okufa writes very many of those. Yeah, as yeah. we're doing a book group, a uh, book of hers. Coming up next month. That's and I, I, I think Netflix might have some some productions on Okura Force Walk. And the fact that she situates uh, uh, walks in the context of African futurism is really good. She's drawn a lot from her Igbo background and, and her Igbo roots. So there's a possibility that those could be subsumed into Nollywood category at some point. We'll see. Um, James, one final question. Maybe someone wanted you to um, share your email address and then somebody wanted you to reshare the database. Thank you so much everyone for attending the talk. I have my email the chat and then the database is also here in the chat. 
Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this session. And thank you, James, so much for presenting. It's been very resourceful and entertaining. Yeah, um, please join us for the last session. It's in 10 minutes. I assure you it's going to be worth your while, worth your time. Thank you so much and see you in 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. Thank you, James. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>